Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Kudabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Pirates of the Caribbean, which is being made by forum user GagaX, and what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a variety of parts to allow you to build space pirate ships, which is fun, a little weird, but fun, and I'm just going to come right out and say it guys, that uh, this is definitely not a mod for for a serious playthrough. This is the kind of mod you install when you're having a bit of a crazy day and you think to yourself, you know what? Let's make something weird. And that's perfectly all right. Who doesn't like having a crazy day on occasion? And well, that's where this mod shines. So let's jump right on into the space plane hangar and take a look at the currently 14 parts that make up this mod. Now we're gonna be in here rather than the VAB because even though the parts do work for either space planes or generic rockets, at the moment it is definitely geared more towards making space planes as it has a a number of aerodynamic parts as well as landing gear so uh, let's type into the search bar Pirates of the Caribbean and there we go we have all the parts and thank you Gaga X for putting the same thing for your manufacturer on every item it makes me happy because I love I love this search bar so much and we'll start up at the top and then work our way down and of course that means starting with the pirate cockpit R-01 and here we see the first reason why perhaps you don't want to use this in a serious playthrough. Now, of course, most people in a serious career mode or science mode, anything like that, they're probably going to prefer something that's more stock-alike in its texturing. Uh, or, for some of you, the hyper-realistic textures. Me, I'm a stock-alike guy. So having all of these parts being very, uh, <laughs> shall we say, ominous in nature, uh, perhaps not up your alley for the serious playthrough, especially with the glowing air intake looking thing right there which actually isn't an air intake it's just an ominous glowing thing it's cool for the purpose of this mod but maybe not the most serious of things but overall it is actually a really really gorgeous cockpit i gotta say this thing it looks absolutely amazing and if it did get retextured for stock alike say for instance i would actually really love to use this for a normal aircraft of some form it's a beautifully built mod here or a mod part rather and as for the stats on this thing it has a crew capacity of one kerbal it has its own built-in electrical generator. It also has two other generators, which I should talk about here momentarily, which will produce fluctons and anti-fluctons. And this is the second big reason I definitely don't think you'd want this in a serious playthrough, because the fluctons and anti-fluctons are what power our two engines that we have here. And that is it just the fluctons and anti-fluctons and this cockpit alone produces six per minute so effectively without putting anything into the system you have infinite fuel all you got to do is throttle down or land for a little while and your fuel tank will get back up and running just by waiting and I'm, ah, that feels cheaty to me. Again, if you're just wanting to do a weird, wacky ship, go ahead, that's perfectly cool. But if you are going for a serious build, uh, this, this could potentially be a killer for you with the infinite fuel cheat, effectively. Uh, but also in here, we do have a pretty typical remains for the rest of it. The reaction wheel, crew report, electric charge, and mono propellant. All good for in this thing. Uh, yeah, just that fluxton and anti-fluxton generator kind of bothers me. But oh well, again, let's stick with wacky playthrough. So the next part we have is the pirate engine VM-01. Patrick and this baby has a max thrust of 400 kilonewtons and that's not atmosphere or space that's just 400 kilonewtons in general these are both some pretty powerful and insane engines once you actually do use them as uh yeah they go fast real fast and it will consume roughly about four fluctons and four anti-fluctons per second max for the engine 
to function. It also does have a gimbal on it and also a built-in reaction wheel. Overall, a pretty good little engine. Let's pop it onto the back and there we are. Again, a very beautifully modeled and very beautifully textured, though, of course, dark and ominous, so somewhat hard to see on occasion, but overall, very, very cool engine. The next one we have is the VM-02 Sandy, which has only a hundred kilonewtons of max thrust and uses about one fluxton and one anti-fluxton per second, and again, gimbling and a built-in reaction wheel. And this is actually a radially attached engine there. Again, a very beautiful model, very beautiful texture, and of course, both of them have a uh, unique particle effect to it that we'll take a look at once we're outside. Now the next item we have is um, the pirate flag. Do not do not read that as it's actually typed. Gaga X, you should fix that typo, because that's a little rude. Uh, but yes, we have a pirate flag, which is a radially attached part, and if we right-click and deploy, boom, there we go. We have our little pirate flag there for you to enjoy, and it's wonderful. And the next part is the pirate fuel tank, which will hold inside of it 200 fluctons and anti-fluctons. Again, very beautiful texture to it. I do like the sort of crossbars on this thing. A very cool indeed. We then have just a pirate structural fuselage, which uh, has no interior storage, but we do get our lovely pirate flag there. Always good to have. And again, beautifully textured. Very nice indeed. We we then have three different sizes of pirate landing gear. We have the large, the medium, there we go, and small, which are effectively just retextures of the typical landing gear. I like the sort of a uh, red front bit on these ones, which makes me sad that the small one doesn't have it. The small one's just gray, but oh well, they all look quite good and quite useful. We then also, if I grab these things off, there we are, lovely. We then have a pirate nose cone, which if I grab that and flip it around, there we are, is just a very, again, ominous looking nose cone. Not exactly conical in nature, it uh, is much more odd in how it's actually textured. You got sort of indentions in all four sides of it. Makes it look like you could ram some uh, ship with this and do some serious damage. And yes, it is a, just a functioning nose cone. There we go. Uh, the next part is a pirate particle generator, which like the cockpit system, creates those fluctons and anti-fluctons as well as power. It'll do two power per se, or 10 power rather, per second, a hundred anti-fluctons per second, and a hundred fluctons per second. And this is always active. It's constantly running. So with producing that much per second, when these engines only use one to four, that's effectively infinite fuel and power. Uh, so again, uh, more for the crazy wacky playthrough, but I do love the texturing on this. It's very cool with the glowy nature to it. Very nice indeed. We then have three different wing parts here. They have the... Uh, Nice little K01, which is a nice a long wing bit, which is perfect for adding on radial engines, etc., to that part or to the side of the ship. We then have just a shorter version, the K02. And lastly, we actually have a control surface wing, which is just a nice black little winglet there. Very good indeed to have, and always good to actually have a control surface functioning for your plane. And yeah, that is all the parts we currently have for this Pirates of the Caribbean mod. So let me open up a aircraft that I made earlier, which is the space pirate ship here. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a small little aircraft, but dear Lord, it can make it to the moon in a really, really short amount of time. And uh, yeah, so we got two of the main engines down here, which are of course the more powerful of the two engines. And then we have these smaller ones out on the side. We're using the different winglets to sort of expand us out width-wise. I probably should have made it a bit longer, but I kind of like the short stubby design of this. And yeah, I do love all the ominous green glows on things. We have ourselves two flag bits there on the wings for, you know, 
having a pirate flag. And yeah, we should be good to go. So let us take this thing off and actually go and take a look at the interior of our command pod, the uh, <laughs> uh, the R-01. All right, let's turn on our brakes and go into Jebediah. Of course, he's our space pirate. And yeah, it's not exactly the most complicated or crazy of interiors, but you know what? It's perfectly usable. It's very nice indeed. I do like all the visibility that we have with the uh, cockpit and just the basic controls all here at your disposal. Always good. And yeah, that... Um yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to show off. Of course, as I said, this thing is constantly generating, so it's making stuff. Now, uh, on this one, also constantly generating. You can't turn it off, so we will have infinite unlimited fuel, so it's not even worth pinning this thing up, because we will literally never run out of fuel with only having four engines. And we're actually going to throttle down and turn on the fine-tune controls, because these engines... Oh boy, these engines are... Uh, Ooh, they're powerful. Let me actually turn off the UI here and let's roll. So there is the very cool particle effect with these. And of course we do also have the weird sound. Oh God, take off quick before I run into that building. Okay, there we go. <laughs> did I remember to turn on the SAS? Hold on a moment. Let's turn back on the UI and I did not. There we go. No wonder it was shaky. All right, let's pull in the gears and I am only at one third throttle. And we're already up to 350 meters per second and getting the wind effects on this baby. It uh, it doesn't need air intakes, it just needs its fluctons and anti-fluctons and you go, you fly, fly away. Ooh, which I just noticed, I think this particle effect may be in the wrong spot perhaps? Shouldn't it be a bit further back, like around this ring? Huh, interesting. Interesting, I hadn't noticed that before. But yeah, it's a cool particle effect nonetheless. I do like that it is uh, cylindrical in nature. Very cool indeed. And if we just go up and throttle up, there's that lovely buzzing sound to these engines. And there we go, heat, lots and lots of heat. We're already up to a thousand meters per second there. I should throttle down before our cockpit gets blown up. And basically, I want to show off how overpowered these engines are. And again, another reason why perhaps you don't want to use this on a uh, serious playthrough. As we're gonna try and get a moon intercept as quick as possible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, you know, target the moon over here. And without even really having to do anything of uh, any importance, we're just gonna, you know... Uh, set our SAS to point at the target and we're getting into the upper atmosphere now so no more heat effects which means throttle all the way up and yeah if we just throttle all the way up directly at the moon we'll get to such a quick speed we'll get an intercept pretty quickly and not that much time at all and that um that is interesting but also kind of cool I mean it's Again, if you're wanting to do something a little wacky and crazy, the space pirate ship is definitely the way to go with its crazy engines and uh, overpowered fuel design. But if we actually go to... Oh god, we're already actually intercepted. I wasn't paying attention. In fact, we're gonna run into the moon. <laughs> Within just seconds, we're already up to over 5,000 meters per second in our speed. And we have intercepted the moon. Ha oh, actually, no, we're actually going to be a bit behind the moon, in fact, at uh, a million meters. So, you know, if we just do the opposite burn, we could then circularize our orbit and bam, we could land on the moon. And that, that is the overpowered portion of this mod. It's fun. And definitely for just screwing around, uh, it's perfect for that sort of a thing. Just making crazy ships to fly around is just cool. Though, of course, the black design does make it kind of difficult to see at times, considering the darkness of space. Uh, but nonetheless, it is quite a fun, cool design. I do enjoy these parts. I've been having a lot of fun with them, just making wacky designs and 
traveling all over the solar system at faster speeds than I've ever achieved before without having some sort of warp mod. And, well, frankly, that's just cool. So, yes, if you would like to try this mod out for yourself, you can take a look at the link in the description, as always, and I definitely say to go and give it a try and, uh, you know, have some fun with it to build some cool ships. If you make anything particularly interesting, I would love to see it. Just uh, tweet me or Facebook me a pic of it. And, yeah, I hope you do enjoy this lovely mod. And, of course, that you have enjoyed this video today and that you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching, my friends. And, as always, have a good one. Now, let us fly. Fly as fast as possible. Later, folks.